like when I was in high school, I, I, I was fascinated with antimatter. So, um, why? Because because I was um, I, I maybe I was getting kind of bored with with like the earth, and I I wanted an, another earth, you know, that, like an anti-earth. Everybody wants to say they've discovered the Higgs, but there's no one person that does this. I mean, there's 3,000 people in CMS and a thousand more in Atlas, so it's like 7,000 people. And I mean, every one of these people have contributed at some point. I get like a hundred emails a day. Oh, great. This is what I got for QCD, right? That looks pretty good, That's actually. Right. This is GT bar. That looks really good too. It has a, like a number of different properties. So I, I study one of the properties, and these guys study different properties. I mean, in the end, you combine them and you look at them all at the same time. The worst case scenario is that we do see a Higgs, but it's only three sigma. We're expected to see it at five sigma this year. Things are constantly going wrong. Some part of the detector breaks, and basically, if, if this part breaks, then you know, you know, some fraction of your data is corrupt. I mean, depending on the day, like 30 or 40 percent of your data is corrupt. It's kind of like you know, you're playing a lottery and you get to like check your ticket, you know? But it's not like you can just push the button and like, bam, Higgs. It probably takes a week to sort out the data. Some people are getting very emotional. We're not done analyzing the data, right? And you have to be scientific about it. I mean, it's nerve wracking because you want to be sure of your results. And there's a lot of work to do this. Albert had the awesome idea of uh, throwing this little party. Of course, we didn't know how hard you had to work. We're very, very proud of how well the Higgs group has done. Thank you very much and enjoy and uh, then go back to work. Cheers. Cheers. We're having a great day, yes. It's not bad. It's not bad. Cheers. Well, all right, these guys think they saw something, but it, in the Tau group, we don't see anything. It could be that it's just a random fluctuation and our results are just Seeing, we're seeing something different, or it could be that the Higgs has different properties than we expected. Maybe they, there's not one particle, but there's two, and the properties are different. We're in a time of confusion. So it's, I mean, I think I think the only thing that will solve it is more data. If we combine the ZZ and Gamma Gamma in the region of 125 GeV, they combine to give us a combined significance of five standard deviations. Last, uh, we look at Higgs to Tau Tau in these four channels. This is what we see. No evidence of anything uh, really at 125, and we come close to excluding the standard model at 125. But this also shows you we're really at the beginning. We have a lot of uh, work to do. We need to run a lot. When Joe showed the Tau result, the person next to me started like booing. I was, you know, well, I was ready to punch her in the face, but, you know, either we were unlucky, we just had a bunch of downward fluctuations, or it means that, you know, you know, maybe the, we're seeing something that's actually more profound. Is that, you know, it's not actually the Higgs we expect. <laughs> we're at a point where it could still be a statistical fluctuation, but the next time around it can't. Everybody's waiting on our results. It's a very difficult analysis. Everybody says we screwed it up 
and it's so difficult and you know we should see the Higgs and it's exactly like we predicted it and everybody will win a medal because we, we knew exactly what was going to happen 30 years ago. So everybody's pissed off at us. So when we went back and we looked, we saw there was some radiation damage in some of our detectors. Everything gets damaged as you run, everything gets radiation damage. We can measure the damage and we can correct for the effects. We were constantly getting more damage, so some of the, the newest corrections were missing. So when we went back, we came up with a much better correction. We went from a 30% deficit to a two sigma excess, so 5% chance that it's not an excess. And so we had something that, and the excess was right at the Higgs peak. It looked exactly like a Higgs. For months, I was like, we're going to find something new. It's not going to be there. We're going to exclude it. And I was just completely wrong. You know, with more data, everything started to converge to just the plain old boring Higgs. I actually went through depression when we started to see the Higgs because I, I thought it was, I really thought it wasn't there.